Hi there, welcome to my channel. My name is Leah and today is Get Ready With Murder. That means I am gonna do a full Get Ready With Me and you're gonna watch me put on makeup while I talk about a super interesting true crime case. Today we are talking about the death of Angela Angie Simoda and the amazing Sheila Waisaki. If you wanna hear this whole story and see how I did this look, please make sure to stay tuned. Today we are going to be talking about the murder of Angela Angie Simoda. I'm starting with the Maybelline Master Prime green blurring redness controlling because it's winter time here and my face gets super red in the winter so we'll see how this works today. Alright, so Angela, went by Angie, was born in 1964 in Pennsylvania and was raised by a single mother. She had you know a pretty typical life not the super happiest life you know having no father around but she really was smart and a total like all-american super cute girl um who by the time she graduated from high school decided that she was going to go to southern methodist university in texas and while she was at school she was doing everything right she's super smart she joined a sorority she was getting her degree in computer science and mechanical engineering um, and this was the early 80s so there wasn't a ton of women in that field um so it was you know it's kind of awesome to see that she was you know out there doing the damn thing really so on the night of october 12th 1984 she and a couple of friends went out to the state fair of texas and then went out for some drinks after that it was her one of her girlfriends and then two of their male friends um her boyfriend she had a boyfriend at the time but he was a construction worker so they have to get up and work super early in the morning and he did not go with them so they stayed out and went to the Rio room which sounds like a super fun <laughs> nice 80s themed dance club <laughs> and they were out until about 1 a.m. Angie gets um, stops by her boyfriend's place to say goodnight um, you know a few drinks you want to say goodnight to your boyfriend and then returns to her home after that to go to bed and you know have her night be over I'll use the Rimmel Stay Matte Concealer um, shortly after she would have gotten home, her boyfriend got a phone call from her that he couldn't hear anything and then it got disconnected very quickly thereafter. So of course he was very concerned, called the police, and the police went to her apartment to investigate and found Angie had been um, raped and stabbed 18 times and died the coroner's report stated that she died due to um, trauma to her heart. So basically she'd been stabbed one of the times directly in the heart. So having, you know, found her, there was a police investigation done. There was a lot of suspects brought up. The two guys that she was out with that night, one of her ex-boyfriends, her current boyfriend, um, and a few other people that she had come into contact with. Um, the boyfriend, of course, had an alibi and was found, you know, not to be a suspect, although he was a suspect and really heavily looked into it for a long time. But the police really liked um, one of the guys who'd gone out with her that night and her friends. Um, but eventually the case went cold. They did do, however, a um, rape kit at the time of the investigation. So they collected samples. I believe they got semen samples, a fingernail or two and another form of DNA that I can't remember off the top of my head. But again, this was the early 80s, so DNA testing wasn't being done at this time. And for eyes today, I will be using the Physician's Formula Butter Eyeshadow Palette in the shade Sultry Nights. Oops, the little terrible brush just fell down. Um, it looks like this, it's very pretty. So now Sheila Wysocki comes on the scene. Sheila was a super good friend of Angie's. She was a roommate at one point. Um, and she did not feel that this investigation was done well enough. So, and after Angie was killed, she left college. She felt that she couldn't be safe anywhere. She didn't know, because the case was never solved, she didn't know who she could trust and who she could be around. And um, so she left college and kind of moved back home, got married, and always like, 
kind of thought about Angie and how that whole thing really changed her life. So years later, when O.J. Simpson is on trial, she learns about DNA evidence and how DNA evidence can identify people by their, you know, blood, semen, nails, things like that. So she says she kind of remembered hearing about some of that in her biology classes in college, um, but not really how how it worked. So she began to call the police department and in her own words, started badgering them about reopening the case and doing DNA testing. Well, after a long time of getting nowhere, talking to the police, trying to get them to you know, look at the DNA in this, she actually decided to herself become a private investigator. Um, what that did was allow her to request tests on the DNA herself and get the DNA evidence to actually test against the men that they took other, um, you know, um, samples from, you know, the ex-boyfriend, the boyfriend that, oh my gosh, look at this purple, the men that they were out with that night, all of the people who were actual suspects and she was like this is gonna be it we're gonna finally get the answer one of these guys one of these guys is gonna match up um we're gonna get closure for me all of angie's friends and family and she'll finally you know know who did this to her well at the time there was a crazy huge backlog of dna tests because it was a pretty new technology so it took two years for the DNA on this to come back. And when it did come back, it had no matches to any of the suspects. Um, so Sheila was just like gutted and devastated. She's like, I went through all of this work and there's still no answer. And I just like, don't know, I don't know what to do. Um, so the day that she found out that there, there was no match, she was just devastated. But shortly thereafter, because at the time, um, they would do scans when they did DNA testing of anybody who was in the system and she got a match. Okay. She got a match to a man named Donald Best. He, at the time of Angie's murder, was out on parole from a 25 year prison sentence that he had been serving for, this is gonna be a shocker, sexual assault. Um, at the time that the test came back, he was actually back in prison for sexual assault. Um, where he was serving a life sentence. So he was a repeat offender and um, was very violent and was serving a life prison sentence because of that. So with that link to Angie, they were able to try him and he was sentenced to death. And actually during the punishment phase of the trial, so you know, of course, the DNA, and he was found guilty. Um, and then there's, um, during trial processing, the sentencing and punishment is a separate portion. Um, at this point, a lot of women came forward that stated that they were either raped or abused by Bess, including his ex-wife, who stated that during the three years that they were married, he had repeatedly um, abused and assaulted her and was very abusive to their child. So um, this was in the late 60s. So she, their marriage only lasted three years. All right, so I just went and put on my brows and mascara. I used the Superhero from It Cosmetics along with Wander Beauties on Lash. These two together are my current favorite. Right, and to warm up my face, I'm gonna use this little guy from Rimmel Cosmetics. Um, I tried it out the other day, I liked it. We'll see if I still like it. So all these women came forward during Bess's trial, um, basically saying that he was totally violent, a serial assaulter. There was gonna be no rehab for him. There was just no way he was, you know, he should be on this earth and the judge basically agreed um he said with his history and with the dna evidence that he would be um sentenced to death so he at that point was sentenced he appealed a few times and has lost all of his appeals for that okay i will say that, that his trial started in 2010 um that's how long it took from 1984 to 2010 to actually like get some closure for this case um so he appealed a few times in like 2013 and 2014, but up until that point, you know, we know that it has been upheld. So it took quite a while. Like the justice system was a little slow. Um, so he's currently on death row. His execution date has not been set, but I guess that's pretty typical. Um, he'll probably have chance to appeal 
again depending on what if he gets you know good lawyers or what his lawyers decide to do until then he's just kind of waiting around to die um in prison and Sheila is actually still working as a private investigator. So that's kind of like the cool thing out of all of this is that Sheila found a way that she can help other people who are feeling really frustrated and lost like herself. I just think that's such a like cool part of the story is that this woman like took it upon herself to basically solve her friend's murder after years and years of it being a cold case and having no answers and just not knowing what happened to her friend so she really just like was like f you guys i'm gonna do this myself i think that's awesome and there was a interview with her that i watched where she was talking about how all these people were saying to her oh doesn't it feel so good to have closure um get this hair out of my face now that you know what happened doesn't it feel good to have closure you can move on with your life I'm going to use the Maybelline Vivid Hot Lacquer in the shade Charmer. Um, and she said, no. She said, it's really good to know, but I don't have closure. Angie's still dead. Angie was taken from us super violently. Um, I don't feel like I have closure because I still don't have my friend. And I thought that was such an interesting thing to say because she really talked about how people who haven't lost people in the way that she did and other people did like so violently and so abruptly they don't have that same thing so by saying to me oh aren't you so glad you have closure they have no idea what they were talking about and I am taking that as a takeaway from this where you don't know other people's experiences and um just being sympathetic instead of trying to say oh, aren't you so glad this happened or don't you feel better now um is a something to really think about in the way you talk to people just in general about anything all right you guys that is it for today in the story of angela angie samoda i hope you liked this video i really enjoyed this story just finding out about sheila and all the things that she did to basically solve her friend's murder all by herself was super awesome and i love hearing stories about women taking control like that so if you like this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button a new true crime video comes out every tuesday all right have a super great rest of your day and we'll talk to you in the next video bye 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 bye